Welcome to Bates Bushra, I'm Bushra and this is my home. Today we are doing a top 10 kitchen essentials video and I wanted to share this list with you. I'm thinking of all the people that have to move into a new place and they need to buy just the basics just to get their kitchen started or like a college student who's going away for a few years and then coming back home and so they don't want to buy too many things. Also, I hate a cluttered kitchen. So I just wanted to come up with a list, um, an all-inclusive list of things that you really, really need and then everything else is extra if you so choose to buy them for your kitchen. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the fam bam. And uh, we post all kind of fun stuff here, uh, mostly recipes, mostly Arab, food recipes or Arab inspired recipes, Middle Eastern cuisine, um, but also things that I just really enjoy, including lifestyle stuff as well and recommendations like this list. Uh, sometimes we just sit here and chit chat, so we'd love to join you. Please consider, please consider subscribing down below. Number one, you're going to need some knives. Sounds like an obvious thing, but I would suggest go to a specialty knife place and really try out all the knives there in person. Sometimes when you go to Costco, there will be um, like demos for certain brands and most often the Cutco brand, which I highly recommend. And I really like them because their warranty is really good. The handles are sturdy and strong and the blades are well made. When you're buying knives for your kitchen, first of all, don't buy the sets you probably won't use all of them. Very rarely are you gonna use every single piece in that and it's kind of a waste of money in my opinion. So just find what you like. If you are if you chop more, you can buy a chopping knife. If you like more of the chef's knife, you can get one of those. A good knife should feel like an extension of your arm. Am I talking too fast? I think I am. A good knife should feel like an extension of your arm um, so that you feel really comfortable when using it because the best knives are the ones that are safest in the kitchen and a bad knife is just a dull knife. Um, so go with something that you are comfortable using, I would say pick a big knife, like a chef's knife, and also choose like a small like paring knife. If you just have those two sizes, like a big knife and a small knife, a uh, chef's knife, like a paring knife, it'll take you really far in the kitchen and you won't need to buy a huge set so you can save money in that and spend awesome good quality knives. Number two, you're going to need a cutting board. Sounds obvious again, but this is like, you know, if you don't have one, you're just like, what, what am I supposed to chop on? Best cutting board, would be to go with a wooden one because they're natural and it won't uh, affect or mess up your knives and it won't affect your food as well. If you can't, I would just say get a really big one of those like um, plastic ones, you know, like Marshalls or TJ Maxx. Um, so get a big cutting knife, try to go for wooden if you can. Um, read up on how to maintain that um, and how to clean it so that you can um, invest in something good quality so that it'll last you for years. Yes, the other option is to get like two, medium size, so that for me, I don't like to mix anything savory with anything sweet. Like my savory cutting board, separate. If it has garlic, if it has onion, if it has whatever chopped on it, it's different than things I'm gonna chop my fruit on, for example. Number three, you're gonna need some good pans or good pots. Uh, think about how you cook, think about your favorite things, okay? Let's say you're a ramen person and you know you're gonna be in college, you can have a lot of ramen and you like to make your ramen nice and fancy, get yourself a nice small pot for yourself, right? Um, if you're more like, okay, well, I'm starting, I have a family of four, family of five, family of six, whatever, <laughs> and you need like bigger pots because you're gonna be cooking for a lot of people, then get, you know, Think about what you need in terms of the sizes of the of the cooking that you're gonna do. I would suggest get get a small pan and a big pan. This is my favorite brand at the moment. It's the hex clad one. Um, I like it because it's nonstick. The handle doesn't get hot ever, and you can use metal utensils on here without scratching. A lot of pots and pans, you cannot use metal and they recommend that you only use wooden spoons or plastic or silicone or whatever. And the problem with that is realistically, you might have like a fork in your hand and you just wanna, you know, move something around in your pot or in your pan and then you might accidentally forget and scratch it. So that's not cool. So I like these, they're really high quality. These are also from Costco and um, I have the small one, which gets a lot of use, and then the bigger one, which is probably twice as big. They also sell the pots and the pans. Another good brand is, I think it's called, oh, I don't remember. That one is sold in a set. 
Um, if you can get a set, it's really good, but check out, check out, you know, the sizes in the set if you're really going to use all the sizes. Um, otherwise, just invest in a couple of really good ones. All Clad is another good brand. Um, Cuisinart has some good ones if you just want, like, um, if you just want all, like, stainless steel, full stainless steel uh, pieces. I would steer clear from the non-stick, like, fancy schmancy ones until you feel really comfortable and confident in how to cook with those because the non-stick quality only works if you're using them on medium-low heat and you have to only use wooden spoons in those. So if you accidentally mess up, you don't want to scratch it. They're expensive, they're fancy, they're cute. Practice with some, like, more practical pieces like this. Steer clear away from the cast iron as well. If you don't know how to use a cast iron, like, get comfortable in cooking first with the regular pots and pans and then you can move on to that. Um, just my advice. Number four, you're going to need a blender or a food processor. And I say this because mm, if you don't have one, you don't realize how much you need one until you don't have one. And then you're like, oh man, I just want to like blend something up really quickly. They're just really versatile. And I think that's what's really good in, all, in my entire list here is to choose pieces and things that are really versatile and things that you can use in different ways in your kitchen. So if you have a smoothie, let's say you're just, you know, one or two people, um, small apartment, and you want to make a smoothie, you can just get the small Nutribullets um, and it, you, can use, you can make um, salsas and marinades and you can use them to make your smoothies, you can use them to like, um, like process, uh, what is it called? Like grind, like coffee beans. You can use them for so many things. Um, so I really like those and think about your lifestyle again if you prefer something like a blender, um, a high, high speed blender or a food processor, but something that can like some kind of machine that can process your food quickly and has like blades and things. Number five, and this one's kind of interesting. It just popped in my head because when I was moving into my new house a few years ago, I didn't have one and I was like, mm, dang, how am I supposed to open this? But you need a can opener. And unless you buy cans only that have like the popping lid, right? How are you gonna open a can opener? Maybe I should have researched this. Is there another way to open a can without having a can opener like safely? I don't think so. Number six, you're going to need um, some baking sheets. Okay, so you don't need many, but if you can just get like a big size like this one and then like a medium size or like the half, the half, right, then that will be good. You can make fish, you can make chicken, you can make meat, you can make chickpeas, roasted chickpeas, you can make granola, what is it, kale chips, like really any diet or food preference that you like can be oven baked. You can make fries. If you only buy a baking sheet to make fries, do it, or to make cookies. I mean, really, these are so versatile and you can just use them at, like to dry things on or just like as a tray as well. So. Baking sheets, get some good quality ones. This one is from Le Creuset. Le Creuset. You know, find one that you like and just baking sheets. Very essential, very, very important in the kitchen. Number seven, you're going to need some wooden spoons. And wooden spoons can be used, again, versatility is key. You can use them for just mixing dry things, mixing, um, what is it called? Mixing like baking for baking cakes. You can use them obviously in all of your cooking soups um, and just regular food. Like wooden spoons are so helpful. I don't like the silicone ones. I don't like like regular spatulas. I don't think they're helpful. Um, if you go on Etsy, they have really cute printed wooden spoons, like wooden spoons that have been etched with, um, with that like wood burning tool so that they have like drawings and designs on them. So cute. Also weirdly, whenever I travel, I buy wooden spoons from like different places because you can never have too many. Number eight, mixing bowls. So mixing bowls are really cool. You can use them for everything. You can eat straight out of them. If you make a salad and a big mixing bowl, you can use it as a food bowl as well. Um, mixing bowls are, can come like in two different ways. You can get like the ones that are kind of like wider for more for cooking. Um, or for like bread making maybe and I found a really good set the other day at Sam's Sam's Club just like the The restaurant quality ones um, and they come in like a size of like three different set. Sorry. They come in a set of three different sizes <laughs> It sounds so obvious. I'm like, of course, of course you're gonna need mixing bowls in your kitchen And you're gonna need a lot of things but in case it didn't occur to you. Okay mixing bowls Another um, design for mixing bowls is the ones with like the silicone bottoms. I really like those, especially for cake making and for cookie making, for cookie baking, um, because they have a non-skid bottom. So choose your preference, pick one. Number nine for me and my 
Arab household. An electric kettle. If you don't have one, please get one. It saves so much time and so much of your energy when you need to, let's say, okay, I got a big pot, all right? And I got my chicken at the bottom and it's searing and it's getting a nice color. And I got the onion, I got the flavorings and I got all of the spices and things in the herbs. And now I need to fill it with hot water. Like, am I gonna take my entire pot to the sink and fill it with hot water from the tap? No, it's cooking. I got my electric kettle, I got boiling water, put the boiling water on top of the pot, make my chicken soup, okay? <laughs> also, when you're making rice, like Arab rice, you need hot water. You need boiling hot water after you toasted your rice and you toasted your shaydiyah, vermicelli, and you put hot water. Again, I'm not gonna take like hot water from the tap. It's not hot enough. So boil your water in the electric kettle, also, make your tea in the electric kettle and then put it in the, in the teapot because who has time to wait for their water to boil? Who has time for any of that? Nobody. Electric kettle. Solves all of your problems. You're welcome. Okay, and now we're at number 10. So number 10 is fun. Pick something in your life that you just want to splurge on. Think about your personality. Are you a coffee person? Do you want to splurge on an espresso machine? Do it. Only get one appliance at this point. You're not gonna need anything. You're not gonna need all of the stuff. You don't need like your rice cooker and your slow cooker and your Instapot and your air fryer. Just pick one. What are you gonna use the most? Something you're gonna use five times a week. Something that you will leave on your counter because you will use it every single day. That's what you're gonna need. Are you a smoothie person? Get a high, 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 high uh, speed blender. Are you a coffee person? Get an espresso machine. Are you an air fryer person? You hate using the oven. You don't want any baking sheets. I don't need that stuff. I just wanna put everything in the air fryer and let it cook for me. Do it, go for it. Are you somebody who goes to work in the morning and then wants food cooked at night, uh, after work freshly for you? Then get your slow cooker. Are you somebody who needs rice every day? Get a rice cooker. Like whatever's gonna help you ease your food task that day and it's going to make you feel like excited to come into the kitchen in the morning, excited to come in the kitchen for dinner, excited to cook something nutritious and delicious for you and for your soul. That's the thing that you're going to get. Please do not buy all the appliances. They're gimmick. They're not gimmicky. They're there to take your money. Don't fall into that trap. And um, really just think about your life, sit with yourself and say, what do I need every day to bring me joy? Food should bring you joy and your kitchen should bring you joy. And I hope you like this video. I hope it brought you joy. Thank you so much for watching today. If you click any of the links in the description box below, they are my affiliate links. It supports me if you so choose to use the links. If not, no problem. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. And I will see you next time, inshallah. No, I finally got myself in focus. It took forever. <laughs>